in the city of Lviv on a fall afternoon. While exploring the sights, we watched a man throw a kitten into the trash. We picked him up, wrapped him in a blanket, put him in a bread basket, and took him back to the hotel. He needed a name. Being from a city known for chocolate, we decided to call him Coco. But he loved Ukrainian tuna. We put him into a makeshift carrier and took him to the vet, where he earned his Ukrainian passport and began a 1,000 kilometer journey across Europe to his new home and family. Eight months later, we caught up with our little buddy in Switzerland. Our gracious host, Claudine Giovanoni, adopted Coco together with her horseback riding daughter, Sarah Luna. Claudine's son, Emanuele, plays the piano, and her husband, Massimo, plays the cello, a symphony that Coco enjoys almost as much as chewing on Trisha's purse. To better understand Coco's new home in Ticino, Switzerland, Claudine and Massimo generously took us on a tour. Our first stop, the Verzasca Valley, where Merlot wine grapes grow alongside incredible geological formations and architectural delights dating back centuries. Featured in the James Bond film GoldenEye, the bungee jumping here is one of the highest in the world. Also in the Verzasca Valley, we had the chance to stroll through the beautiful stone village of Coripo, where old frescoes adorn the houses, and the mountain air and water are crystal clear. Next, we boarded a ferry in the lakeside city of Ascona, floating over the shimmering waters of Lake Maggiore. We made our way out to the mystical Burisago Islands. The waters of the lake trap and release the sun's heat year-round, creating a unique microclimate on the islands. Perfect for a botanical garden with 1,500 plants from five continents. Next, Claudine would take us to Chavio, a small Italian Swiss village known for its masonry work and for its hillside grottoes. A must-see in Ticino is Bellinzona. Claudine would show us the three castles that comprise this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Being a strategic crossroads between Northern and Southern Europe, these fortifications have seen many battles in the past 2,000 years. Imagine for a moment a village perched on a mountaintop where the only connection to the outside world is a cable car. There are no roads leading to the village of Raza. The 20 or so residents must ride the cable car to go to school or to go shopping. Trisha and I packed a picnic lunch and spent a day exploring Raza. Claudine's husband, Massimo, spent a few of his formative years in Raza, riding the cable car to school every day. We met a ceramic artist at the bottom who still remembers Massimo and his family. A quick train ride, and we were back in the city of Locarno, where music, warmth, and love are being showered on Coco, a once homeless kitten who is now treated like royalty. Coco, living the dream in Ticino, Switzerland. <laughs>